Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm, I'm William Wang from Huawei Cloud, and uh, I'm maintainer of Volcano Community. And in the last uh, 10 years, I have been working on the traditionally software, HPC software development, and the AI and big data on Kubernetes. So uh, today my topic is how to leverage Volcano to uh, improve the resource utilization for Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to, uh, firstly, I'm going to talk about the Volcano project, and then uh, I'd like to talk about the architecture of Volcano and uh, how it works in Kubernetes. Uh, after that, I'm, I'm going to talk about the new challenges and uh, some features. And finally, I will show you several use cases uh, to show you how Volcano help users to, to improve their job performance and uh, the resource utilization. Okay, so Volcano project is open sourced uh, in 2019 and, open, and uh, donated by Huawei to CNCF in 2020, 2020. And currently we have more than 500 uh, contributors all over the world and uh, more than 50 enterprise users have adopted Volcano in their production environment. And uh, uh, for this month, we will release the, uh, the 24th uh, version. Here we can see uh, Volcano project has strong relationship with the upstream computing framework, such as, such as the Spark Flink in Big Data and the uh, Kubeflow, MPI and uh, PyTorch, etc. Uh, so we, we currently we support m most of these computing frameworks efficiently. And uh, here we can see uh, Volcano is not just a uh, scheduler. Uh, it has the uh, job controller to, con to control the enhanced job lifecycle management and support the multiple pod template. And also it has the, the queue to help users to share resources for much tenant. And we, hold, we, and we also support the, uh, the scheduler, enhance the scheduler, and uh, support the just like the topology-based scheduling, uh, gun scheduling, and uh, preemption and backfill. For the analyzing hardware, uh, we are working with, with Kubernetes to support uh, uh, the more kind of uh, heterogeneous devices like uh, S86, ARM, GPU, MPU, and Kunlun. And also uh, for the command line, we also developed uh, uh, a variety of uh, command line to help uh, traditionally HTC users to migrate from this realm of HTC to Kubernetes more smoothly. <coughs> Uh, here we can uh, here uh, we, we we can have a look about the Volcano archite scheduler architecture. So, uh, Volcano support AI and big data <coughs> through the job-based scheduling and the plugin mechanism. So basically, there are three parts in the Volcano scheduler. The first part is the the cache. So the cache is. Uh, watching the Kube API server and build the job and the task relationship based on the pod group and pod. And uh, for the each each scheduling cycle, uh, as as we all know, in distributed system, it's 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 very difficult to keep a real time consistency uh, for for making decision. So. What kind of scheduler schedule, schedule jobs based on the snapshot at a, at a certain point in time to make a decision. So we can make sure in each scheduling cycle, it's, it's always con consistent. And in each scheduling cycle, we, are, we have the open session and uh, multiple actions and the closed session. In the open session, user can register a variety of algorithm plugin in the red part. And uh, uh, we support four actions in default. And the, these actions are executed in, in sequence. Uh, 
in sequence. So let's let's take uh, take the allocate action as an example. So the allocate action defines the resource allocation process. So it will call the uh, job order function of the algorithm plugin to sort the job, and and then it calls the node order function to sort the nodes, and finally it will check the job whether the job is ready and uh, submit the decision to the API server. Uh, for the algorithm plugin, we have uh, we have support more than ten uh, ten algorithm plugins in Volcano. <coughs> so the 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 first uh, the first level plugin and the second level plugin uh, with this with, with this kind of design, Volcano has strong flexibility to support a customer customized uh, scenario. So this is a, a journey of Volcano. Uh, at the beginning, we supported, we, we developed a variety of scheduling policies and integrated with the, the TF operator and the, and the uh, PyTorch operator and the Argo to help a user to improve, improve the training, work, training workload performance on Kubernetes. And then we, we enhanced the, 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 the queue and the resource reservation and the throughput. And also we integrate with the Spark operator and Flink operator efficiently to have users to migrate their workload from Hadoop X system to Kubernetes. And then we, uh, we, we found the job management in, in Kubernetes is very, is very difficult for users to maintain. So we enhanced the job management to support uh, the uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and uh, MPI in Volcano job plugin. So users no longer to no longer to no longer have to install the all these kind of operators anymore. So currently, there are more and more users uh, running their AI, AI, AI workload and big data workload also the microservice on Kubernetes. But the most use, most users are most concerned about the resource utilization. So we have been exploring in this area. Here are the new challenges in the about the resource utilization. They for, as we all know, the AI technology grew very fast in recent years. Currently, it has in, entered the stage of commonization. Uh, according to the analyst report of OpenAI since 2012, the computing power used in AI training has doubled every three to four months. Uh, uh, and the computing power is becoming the bottleneck of the, of the batch computing. So let's take, uh, take the GPT as an example. Uh, one GPT training requires about uh, uh, 10,000 10, uh, GPU card based on the V100 GPU type, type of GPU. And the chat GPT training requires about uh, 10,000 uh, GPU card based on the A100 type of GPU, uh, NVIDIA GPU card. So, uh, so the computing power is, 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 the, the, is the most uh, bottleneck. But on the other hand, from the third party surveys, we found that the overall CPU utilization is less than 15. So there are many reasons. From the figure, we can see that the long running service has the peaks and the trough. Especially at night, the resource use utilization is really low. And also the, request, the requested resources and the used resources, there, there's a big gap. So if this part of the resources can be, can be reused, the utilization will be greatly re improved. So in Volcano, we are going to support the collocation and the oversubscription to help users to improve their resource utilization. Uh, the, the first, the first uh, solution is if we want to improve the resource utilization, uh, we need to break up the isolated resource pool 
to serve the different kind of workload. And uh, secondly, uh, we are going to deploy multiple kind of tasks in the same cluster. Here uh, is a, there's a, an example. The MPI job is a is, is, is big job. It, it is like the, the, the stone. So the, the big data ETL or transcoding workload is like the sand. Uh, we can put, we, we can scatter them into the, into the bottle. And uh, for the functions, function service like Monte Carlo, uh, we can pour them in the, in the bottle as, as the pouring the water. In this way, we can improve the resource allocation greatly. And also, uh, also we are going to support the uh, oversubscription. Over In this figure, we can see that the there is a big gap between the request resource, resource and the used resource. So we, uh, the scheduler can oversold this part of resource to run some kind of lower priority task. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce several specific features in Volcano to help users to share resources. So several years ago, we added the queue in Volcano and uh, uh, for a resource sharing between multi-tenant. The queue is decoupled with the uh, namespace. That means different namespace can submit jobs in the, in the same queue and uh, and the namespace also can submit jobs to multiple, multiple queue. It's very flexible. Uh, here is an example. There are two queue, Q1 and Q2. Uh, at the beginning, the, there's, there's no jobs in Q2. So the, the jobs in the Q1 can borrow the resources from the Q2 and uh, all the six pods get running. And then a new job was submit was submitted to the Q2. So the scheduler reclaimed two CPUs from the, from the resource pool and get the new job running and keep the, keep the ratio as two to one. So with this mechanism, multiple users can share resources with each other. And there, the, the second use case is about for some users who who have urgent job, they want to reserve, make a reservation for their urgent job. So in Volcano, we support the, the, the guarantee. User can configure the guarantee fields to make a reservation. Also, if we if user submitted multiple jobs in the same queue, so the basic requirement is how to ensure the uh, SRA of the each job. Here we support uh, two two level two levels uh, fair share. The first the first one is the share resources between jobs in the same queue. Here is, a, is an example. The user one and the user two submit a big job and a small job in the Q1. We can scheduler allocate the resources fairly to these two jobs. In Kubernetes, uh, as, as, as we all know, the more pods submitted, the more possibility uh, the job gets get, get resources. So the second use case is uh, uh, about the namespace level of fair share. So namespace two and namespace three. Uh, as we can see, the namespace three have submitted a lot of jobs. So Volcano Scheduler is able to control control the namespace to have the resources fairly. The second, uh, uh, next one is about the, the, the big data. So as we all know, the Spark submit, uh, Spark supports the Kubernetes from the Spark uh, 2.3 in 2017. But for a long time, there's no batch scheduling for the, for the Spark on Kubernetes. So um, in, the in the 2019 and 2020, we can integrate with Spark operator and Flink operator to support the batch scheduling in Kubernetes. And in 2022, we can uh, contributor and the Spark con contributor work together to, to support the Spark, 
Spark batch scheduling in Spark native community. So in the Spark 3.3 version, uh, this feature is uh, user can, user can use this feature in this version. And uh, and last week, Spark uh, published this 3.4. This feature is has entered the GA. So with this kind of integra integration, uh, user have uh, have the following benef benefits. Just like the job based scheduling, the priority, fair share, queue, and the resource reservation. At the same time, we impro improve the uh, throughput in Spark on Kubernetes. Currently, we support uh, uh, 1.5 uh, 1.5 uh, <coughs> post per, per, per seconds. How to enable this feature in, in Spark? It's very easy. When you s submit job, Spark job, you, you need to specify the scheduler name and then prepare a pod group template. Within the pod group template, you can configure uh, a number of uh, batch related parameters, just like the, the queue and the priority and the sort of things. So next one is about the, is about the uh, collocation. As we discussed uh, earlier, for the long running services, there are peaks and trough, and trough period. Uh, in Volcano, we are going to support the, uh, the collocation. On the upper right figure, it, it, it shows the basic model. The scheduler view is able to is able to calculate uh, dynamically the the over, over subscription resources and uh, schedule the low priority task to use this kind of this sort of resources. At the scheduler level, the scheduler will support the the queues awareness scheduling for the on, online service and the offline sub workload. On the node, we have the SRA agent and the enhanced OS to work together to ensure the SRA of the uh, online service. Here, there will be a bunch of uh, technologies to, to, to ensure, ensure the, the SRA, like the CPU, memory, cache, network, disk, isolation in the OS level. The next scenario is about the is about the global scheduling. Uh, late last year, we have we have a number of users from the community. They have they are running their business is about the AI, AI biomedicine and autonomous driving, such as, as like, like that. In these fields, their their workload requires massive computing power. Generally. One region resources is not enough, so the the user have to management a lot of clusters, and these all these clusters are distributed in different regions, so it's very difficult to to, to maintain. And also the scheduling is is very difficult, so we are going to launch a new sub project in Volcano to handle this. The following features will be support in, in, in this sub, sub, sub project. The first one is, is managing the batch workload across the multi cluster. And second, the scheduler will schedule the workload to the proper cluster for better performance or for the better utilization. And third one is about the fair share scheduling and the cost awareness scheduling. And if if you are interested in this this sub project, uh, you're welcome. Work, you're welcome to visit our our, our GitHub and uh, and work together. Next, I will show you several use cases. The first one is about the ING. So the that, so the the the, the ING provides services in more than forty countries. And its core business is about the banking, insurance, and asset management. So for them, the biggest challenge is 
they are when they are introducing the the cognitive technology to to create the next generation data analysis platform, they have the they have the interactive services, the REST data services, and the offline analysis services. They want to com unify all of them into one platform. Also, they, 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 they want to have the fair, fair resource allocation to ensure the SRA and uh, the job preemption for the uh, quick response for high priority task. With the volcano and the, with the volcano's rich scheduling policies, uh, they have succeeded to migrate their workload from Hadoop to Kubernetes mostly. And the number of projects running on the uh, data, anal data analysis platform has increased to more than four, 450. Another use case is, is, is uh, about uh, uh, a new platform. This, this enterprise used the AI and uh, molecular simulation algorithm to create next generation micro scale industry design and a simulation platform for energy material and research. So their goal is their goal is to achieve high performance computing based on the multi Kubernetes cluster and the traditionally Slurm cluster. So the requirement is uh, is all of this Kubernetes cluster is distributed in different regions. It's difficult to maintain. And also the drug, the, the, the drug discovery workload requires massive, massive compute, computing power. So, so we worked with them to develop a global scheduling based on Volcano and, and also uh, provided the cluster load balancing, beam packing, and cluster affinity. This, this kind of features. Also, also users use the Volcano job to run their TensorFlow and PyTorch and MPI workload uniformly. So here is part of our and uh, of users. Uh, especially we have currently we have a lot of users, especially for uh, in AI and big data area. And uh, for the contributors, we have uh, diverse contributors and uh, more than 50% are independent, independent contributors. So here is, here is the, the Volcano resources. Uh, you can uh, connect us with the Slack or the GitHub or, uh, or our website. Okay. That's, that, that's all from me. Thank you so much. If someone has questions, I can. Is there any similar project on the community? Uh, for the, yeah, there, there are some multi-cluster projects in the community, but uh, uh, different projects, they are focusing different, uh, different uh, area. Uh, currently, there are multiple cluster projects, they are focusing on the, the high ability, the fuel over and, the re uh, and the recover. Yeah, things like that, but no, there's no project project focusing on the uh, batch scheduling across multi cluster and uh, cloud native. Can, can Volcano work together with Airflow? Airflow? Uh, currently, we, uh, I have no idea about the, 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 the integration. But uh, uh, I, as, as far as I know, uh, uh, there are some customers they combine the Volcano and the, work and the Airflow together in their platform. I think it works. Their platform means their own Kubernetes cluster, right? Yeah, pure 
Kubernetes cluster. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Okay. So uh, a follow up on the uh, Airflow one. So our team use uh, Argo workflow. So uh, I'm not sure how uh, how's the integration with Argo means. So is that with Argo workflow or other Argo sub project? Yeah, Argo is one of the uh, we, we we integrated with Argo several years ago. It, uh, yeah, we support we support that. So how does the uh, use case fit? Uh, so uh, maybe there are some documents in the, we contributed to the Argo uh, community. User can use Argo to uh, uh, to plan their working job uh, and uh, and uh, configure the dependency and uh, make and uh, control the the pipeline. Okay, so it's like Argo uh, workflow is schedule things on top of Volcano. Yeah. Okay, thanks. But uh, in this area, we also have a, we also have a job flow in Volcano. Uh, as you know, the Argo is currently it, it it's very heavy, so a lot of users they want they, they are Volcano users they want a, a more lightweight uh, job dependency management. So. One of our contributors, they contribute a sub-project named Jobflow to Volcano. Currently, maybe in this month, the, the project will be merged in the Volcano release version 1.8. Okay, that's good for... Yeah, you, 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 you can also have a try yeah, on cool, the Jobflow. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do some research. Thank you. Hello, I'm interested uh, more in using Volcano with Spark. So I was wondering uh, if there is on the roadmap or already exists a declarative way to handle my Spark jobs. Because now I see it as an imperative. I do Spark submit, you showed us an example. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm thinking maybe the future would be to go into a declarative manner and I have a manifest, if it makes sense, I don't know, for you. To have a manifest, so behind the scene, I change uh, in a GitOps manner, I change and I say, I want you to submit a job and uh, it will, uh, by the manifest, it will trigger the job. I don't know if it makes sense. So are you seeing, uh, have a manifest to control the Spark submit? Okay, maybe there's there are already yeah. some tools to 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 do these kind of things uh, in, in in Spark uh, community, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, maybe in what kind of community we we don't uh, cover this this area. Okay, so it's more of a Spark issue, not a Vulcan issue. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Um, I was wondering for the architecture you showed uh, about training mm -hmm. a large machine learning model. Uh, is it something you, you tried? Uh, is there any documentation about it for the training process, not for the inference process? Uh, yeah, we have, we have document uh, for every kind of uh, training operator in Volcano uh, repo. Uh, like a uh, user can use the, the, the YAML we prepared, uh, like uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, MPI, uh, Herald, all these kind of training, train, 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 training models, we have samples in, in there. But for the inference, currently we, we, we don't uh, we, we haven't do some things for the inference because for the inference it's more like a microservice 
it, it is deployment uh, is deployed in the in the type of deployment. Yeah. Um, and for the uh, model, you like you you have a model feature or it's something uh, model store or it's something about. Uh, uh, you mean the 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 upper layers uh, such as the TensorFlow model? Yeah, where do you store the model after training? Uh, store store the model. Uh, yes, in, uh, in, in our part platform, users all, all often store the models in the uh, object storage, uh, the, the, uh, remote storage. Okay. Yeah. Mm. One last question from my side. Uh, regarding day two, how do I monitor uh, how volcano schedules? I'm still interested in volcano with sparks. So how do I monitor? I do I get logs and metrics about the scheduling of jobs? How do I debug? Uh, how to debug? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I put it in production. It doesn't work. What do I do? Where do I go? It doesn't work as expected. Okay. Uh, Debug. Uh, currently, we, we have some tools to to help a user to find the find the issues from the from the log, from the from the the, the volcano log and the Spark log, and uh, all the uh, uh, and the Spark history server. And maybe all all of these are common common tools and common com common common um, approaches. There's, yeah. But metrics? Do we get any metrics from volcano? Uh, metrics? Yes, we we have a kind of metrics that we can uh, can can connecting from the the volcano scheduler and uh, put these metrics to the uh, Prometh Prometheus. Okay, so do we have a Prometheus integration already built in, or how do we? Yeah. Plug it into Prometheus. Is it a pull or a push model? How does it work? Uh, push. Do, uh, so you can deploy a uh, uh, Prometheus uh, with visible kernel, and uh, and uh, and you can configure the statics on there. You can see just you can see how many jobs in the queue, and uh, uh, how many how many. Tasks are running and how many tasks are pending. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. Okay. If there are no question, uh, we Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time.